remember we've been learning direct quotations and yesterday I introduced indirect quotations. Remember indirect quotations are when we repeat what someone has said. It's not the person uh, speaking directly to us. Instead, we are repeating what they said. The direct quotation is when we put quotation marks because the person is actually speaking in a direct quotation. So remember, indirect quotation, the person is not speaking. Direct quotation, the person is speaking. Could we not play with backgrounds? Thank you. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and I have some sentences here, but I want to do them one at a time because um, I'm going to explain how it'll work with each one, okay? So let's just start with number one right now, only number one. So it says, Joe said I could play with his game. Would this be direct quotation or indirect? Joe said I could play with his game. Would this be direct quotation or indirect? Indirect. It's indirect because I'm repeating what Joe said. So go ahead. So do we need quotation marks on an indirect yeah. quotation? Oh. No, we don't because the person is not actually speaking. We are repeating what was said. So go ahead and write number one. Joe said I could play with his game. So you write this kind of like a sentence, capital letter, period. Okay. Spelling four. Okay, so we have number one. Yes, ma'am. Shouldn't take uh, long to get number one down. Okay. All right, so let's look at number two. Now, number two is similar to number one. So number one, we said was indirect. So let's look at number two. It says, you can play the game, said Joe. Now, is this direct or indirect? Direct or indirect, Hannah? Direct. It is direct because Joe is actually speaking in the sentence. So do you see that number one and number two are the same thing? Just different. Number one was the indirect, and number two is the direct quote that Joe said. So Joe said, you can play the game, said Joe. Then when we repeated what Joe said, that was number one. Joe said, I could play with his game. See that? That's how it works. That's how you'll change an indirect to direct or a direct into indirect. So go ahead and write number two correctly. This is a direct quotation, so we need quotation marks. Oh, 
Oh yeah. All right, so let's look at it. All right, so let's go ahead. We didn't correct number one, and then we'll correct number two at the same time. All right, so number one, Joe said I could play with his game. Anybody wants to fix this for us? Capitalize G. I mean J. J. Capitalize first letter J. Capitalize I. Capitalize that I. Put a period. And a period at the end. Okay, so now number two is a direct quotation, so this one's a little different. You can play the game, said Joe. Anybody? How would I write this one the correct way? Put select quotations at you at okay. game. Quotations on you, at starting at the beginning of you, at the end of game. Okay. Capitalize you. Capitalize that Y in you. We put a period. <laughs> period after game. And capitalize J. Capitalize J and Joe. Put period. Period. Okay. So remember, this was the direct quotation. So did I quotation. Do it. You did not? I did it. Oh, okay, good. Okay, so you can go ahead and do three and four. They're the same thing as number one and two. So number three is a, is a certain type, and then number four is a certain type. So you have to read them and figure out which one it is. So you can do three and four. Not nine plus three. Is how many he wrote and then how many more he wrote. Oh, oh that's the wrong thing. It's not plus nine. It's how many he wrote plus how many he wrote. You just wrote what he wrote, but how many did he write at first? And then how many more he wrote? It's not nine. Oh. You never heard this song? It's not nine. It's how many he wrote plus how many more he wrote.
What? Who wrote three more? Now five plus five. He did write five at first, but it wasn't five more. All right, let's go over three and four. Okay. All right, number three, anybody would like to walk us through how to write number three? Can I do okay, go ahead, Solomon. Capitalize D. Okay. Capitalize D and put a period. Good. So was this indirect or direct quotation? Indirect. It was indirect. We are repeating what dad said. Dad told me to clean the kitchen. So that's indirect. Good. Okay. So number four, clean the kitchen, said dad. Clean the kitchen, said dad. Okay. Camille. Camille, unmute. Capitalize C and clean. C and clean. And put a period. Okay. Is that it or anything else? Capitalize D and dad and put a period. Okay. Is this direct or indirect? Direct. So do I need quotations? Yes. Okay, where do my quotations go? Before clean and after kitchen. Yes, so this was a direct quotation. This is the direct quotation of what number three was. Clean the kitchen, said that. Awesome. All right, so let me give you one and I want you to do the opposite. Okay, so this will be like a number five. Okay. Like how we did on the paper yesterday. Remember how we did on the paper? Oh, I know which one. Okay. Pick up the basket, said Lee. So this one is written correctly. It's not, you're not fixing it. I want you to give me the opposite of what this would be. So if it's direct, give me the indirect. If it's indirect, give me the direct. Let's see.
So let's look at number five. So pick up the basket, said Lee. So was this direct or indirect? That's what we need to identify first. Is this direct or indirect? Indirect. I'm going to select right now, but you'll make it indirect. Okay, so it's direct. How do direct. we know it's direct? Because of what? Yeah, number five. How do you know it's direct? Quotation, mark. quotation marks lets us know it's direct. So what should I have changed it to? Lee told me to pick up the yes, indirect would be Lee told me to pick up the basket. Is that what everybody put? Yeah. We're supposed to change this quotation into an indirect quotation, which would say Lee told me to pick up the basket. I have Lee said to pick up the basket. Or yeah, that's who Lee said to pick up the basket. Yes. But as long as you didn't do another direct quotation, because this was direct, you were supposed to make it indirect. All right, awesome. So tomorrow we'll do some more practice with that. Do our test on Thursday. So hopefully you're copying them down so that you are prepared. All right, so that's it for our writing today. Let's go ahead and you can get out your phonics book so we can do our dictation. Two hundred and thirteen. What page? Two hundred and thirteen. because they need to pick it up. That's what I was saying. Okay. All right. Your first word is skip. 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 Should I write skip? 
Okay, Mariah, skip. S K I P. Just S K I P. S K I P. Skip. Okay, next one. Skips. Skips. Suffix S. So skips. S K I P S. All right, now check this one out. Skipping. Mm. Skipping. Mm. Is there a rule to apply? I don't know. Yeah, I remember this. I really don't know. I still have the paper. It's just on the other side. I have the paper. You can't tell us. I don't know. Y'all have to tell me. It's in Lily in this book. I'll tell you. I like It's Lily. Put the Lily. I don't know. I don't like how I'm spending. The whole world is eyes. Okay, Skippy. Let me hear. Who got it? Skippy. All right, all right, let me see. Skipping. S K P P I N G. Okay, you just missed one letter. S K I P P I N G. So, yes, you have to double that P because that was a sharp vowel I, consonant P, skipping. Okay, next one. Skipper. Skipper. Anybody? Skipper? Skipper? That S-K-I-P-P-E-R. So it was the same thing. Double that P. And this time you added suffix E-R. All right. Listen to your sentence. The baby clapped his hands for joy. The baby clapped his hands for joy. The baby clapped his hands for joy. Clapped. The bottom part, you just wrote any word. The picture was supposed to help you figure out the word. The baby clapped his hands for joy. You can just show it on the screen. Once you finish writing it. Joy. Okay. All right. Make sure you have the right punctuation. Mm -hmm. Pick it up higher, Harlem. Which 
A little more, yeah. Okay. The baby clapped his hands for joy. Mm -hmm. uh, four. Anybody else is ready? Not yet. With food, the princess and white tail, too. That's something like this. The same thing? With the ants with a consonant and the vowel is yeah, double, double the consonant before it's added and it's separate That's vowel. right. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Okay, let me see. Okay, Hannah, yeah. I'm getting ready to get the clock done. I'm going to make a little circle. Okay, good, Larry. Just make sure y'all capitalize at the beginning. But I see it. The clock on in our size book just looks just like that one up there. Yeah. Yeah, because they're both the same. Okay. Yeah, that one. All right. So, anybody else before I move on? Me. Okay. All right. So good. All right. So today, remember yesterday I introduced contractions. Remember when it's when you have two words that you put together to make it shorter, right? So we usually take out letters of another word, of one of the words, and we put a, an apostrophe in the place of the letters we took out. So anybody remember some of the contractions we did yesterday? Yeah, some of the contractions from yesterday. Wait, oh. Yesterday, not today. Uh, they all, okay, that was they and will together makes they all. Okay. Um, these, I mean, he'll. He'll, which is he and will. It becomes he'll. Good. Okay, so these are examples of some of the contractions we did on yesterday. So today we'll learn two new contractions. We'll learn how to contract is and are. Okay, so when we have the word is and we want to contract is, this is what the word is looks like. So when I contract is, what I do is I take out the I and it becomes apostrophe S. Now, this is not the same apostrophe S like when we make nouns possessive. This is a contraction apostrophe S. It's two words that were put together. This is what I mean. This is not if I would say Bob. That's not Bob is, okay? Bob is. But if I would say he's... That's a contraction S because it's he and is put together. So keep that in mind, okay? All right, so I have contraction, the two words, he is. How would I contract he is? What will it become when I contract he is? Brian? Um, his. I know. He plus is equals he. He's H E apostrophe S. Apostrophe S. I'm going to scrap that way. No, it is apostrophe S. What is? We took out the I to put apostrophe. Okay? Now look at this. The contraction is she's. What were the two words? The contraction is she's right here. What are the two words? Solomon? 
She. She and is. Good. She and is together makes she's. Next, I have it is, the two words. It is. What will be the contraction for it is? Harlem? Apostrophe S. But what would it say? It's. It's, yes. I-T apostrophe S. Good. So that's contracting S. Next, we have R. How do we contract R? When we have the word R, I take away the A and it becomes apostrophe R E. Okay? So look at we are. How would I contract we are? What would it look like after contracting we are? Hannah? We're. We're. So it'll be we. Apostrophe R E because we took out that A. Next, I have they are. What would be the contraction for they are? Okay, lyric. There. There. T H E Y. Apostrophe R E. There. And you are. What would be the contraction for you are? No. Your, Y-O-U, apostrophe R-E. Good. So that's contracting. When we take two words, we put it together to make a shorter word. We'll take out letters, and we put that apostrophe in place of those letters that we took out. Okay? All right. All right, so go ahead and get out your math book for me. And could you go to your clock page? Did y'all do the clock page yesterday? I was supposed to tell y'all to skip it for today. I don't know if some of y'all did it yesterday, 106, that one, this one. No, I had wanted y'all to skip it. I was supposed to mention that yesterday, but I forgot. Here, erase them, erase those times. This is it here. You have a question, Larry, or you have the page? Wait, erase these. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Even though it's a little. When you go. Yes. And when you do the front, you go to the back of that page. That's what I do. I think I have to shut it now. Uh-uh. <laughs> Let me see. Yep, that's it. Lesson worksheet 106 from yesterday. I don't know if some of you did it. If not, it's okay because that's what we're going over today. It was, yeah, it's not, it wasn't reading the clock that we've learned so far. This one's a little different. Yeah. Um, get it now. Like, whatever you reply, you don't know what. Yes, I do. Lesson worksheet 106 that has the clock.
All right, so uh, so today what we're going to learn based off of that page is how to tell time based on minutes. So we've learned how to tell time on hour, on ten, on half past, and also by the five minute intervals. But now we're going to learn how to tell time by the one minute. Okay, so that's why if you looked at that clock yesterday, it was in between. Even the minute hand was in between, right? And so that kind of could get a little confusing because you're like, I don't know what number it is, but that's what we'll talk about today, okay? So we know, of course, the numbers, the big numbers on our clock are representing fives, right? We have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, but we say o'clock. Now, um, whenever you are telling time with the hour, remember, it simply stays the same. The hour does not change. It's only our minute that changes like that. The hour hand, if it's pointing to two, it's two. If it's pointing to 10, it's 10. But whenever the minute hand is pointing to two, that's actually 10. If the minute hand is pointing to 10, it's actually 50. So we learned that already, and I, I think we're pretty solid on reading a clock. So today we're gonna learn how to tell time when it's like one minute, like instead of the fives, it'll be one minute. So when you look between two numbers, there's always these other lines, these smaller lines that are in between two numbers on a clock. Whenever you see these smaller nines like that, you count those lines by ones. Now, what's important is knowing what to count by, right? So since this is number one, what does this actually represent in minutes? Five. It actually represents five, right? So we know one actually represents five. What well, we're gonna say 12, zero, five. Two actually represents 10. Three actually represents 15. Four represents 20. Five represents 25. Six, 30. Seven, 35. Eight, 40. Nine, 45. 10, 50. 11, 55. And then we have 12 starts with zero. Now, I think we know how to tell time like this. I, I believe we do. So this is important to remember. So if I'm drawing time, I have my hour hand on six, so we know it's six. But then my minute hand is pointing here. Now, I told you that whenever your hour hand is in between two numbers, we always go with the number that it just passed, right? Because the clock moves this way. So whatever number just passed. But when it comes to the minutes, we can't say that. I can't say, oh, it just passed three, so that means 15 minutes. No. When we get to minutes on a clock, we can actually count by ones if it's pointing to any of the shorter lines. What I do is I see where my last whole number was, which was 15, and I start counting by ones with these numbers. You see what I'm saying? Yes, ma'am. So this was 15, so I would say 16, 17, 18. Oh. And if I kept going 19, then 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, oh, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Do y'all see what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Do y'all see? I can't see everybody's face. A lot of screens are muted, so I'm not sure. But okay. All right. So anytime your minute hand, this is the minute. It's pointing to any of these smaller numbers you count by ones. What you have to do, though, is know which five you have to start with. So where in this case, since it just passed three, we'll start with 15. So then it'll be 16, 17, 18. So this time, it's in it's 6, 18. See that? OK, let me show you another one. So I'm gonna put my hour on 12. Zero. And look where my minute hand is, okay? So we know the hour is 12 because the hour hand, no matter what number it points to, it's always going to be that number. So our hour is 12. Now we have to figure out where the minute hand is. So again, your clock goes like this. So based on the clock going this way, what 10? Did it just pass? What 10? I'm not 10, I'm sorry. What five did it just pass? Just tell me. Eight, eight, eight which would be 40. 40. It would be 40. 
because we're calling them fives. So I start counting by one. So I say 40, 41, 42. So what time is it? 42 o'clock. No, 12, 42. Remember, your hour was on 12. 12, and our minutes was on 42. Are we on our book? No, 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 no. We're not in the book yet. We're not in the book yet. Does everyone understand me? It's it's really quiet for online, so I'm not sure if y'all are like, you understand or no? I do. Kind of, Larry? You say kind of? Okay. Anybody else? Yes, no? I understand. Okay, Harlem, yeah. Camille, say yes. Omar? Solomon, what do y'all, yes, no? Kind of? I understand. Okay, I'm just making sure, guys. This is really quiet. I, I need you to, like, talk to me so I can know what, what you're doing. Okay, let's do another one. So let's find our hour. Remember, no matter where your hour is, it's always going to be the number. It's really that minute hand that we got to do all that counting with, okay? So your hour, that's something you shouldn't always stress about. So look at this. My hour is pointing to two. Okay. Let's put my minute hand somewhere. Hey. All right, look at our minute hand. Look where it is. Okay, so we know the hour is what? Two. Now I need to figure out what my minute is. So we look. What five did it just pass? Uh, six. Which will be how many minutes? 30. 30. So now from this 30, I start counting by one. So 30, 30, 30. What time is it? 2.32. Okay, let's look at another one. It's amazing this blue Not when you get in fourth grade, you're going to forget it. No, Look where my hour is. It's between nine and ten. Hmm. I don't know. Do y'all know what that means? If your hour is between nine and ten. What? So let's figure out my hour first. My short hand. What would my hour be? It's between nine and ten. So which one would I go with? The nine or the ten o'clock hour? The nine. The nine. Nine, because it the just nine. passed up nine. Remember, the clock travels this way. And anytime it falls between two numbers, you always go with the number it just passed. So my hour is nine. Nine. Now we have to figure out the what? Minutes. So look at that. Which five did it just pass? 12. 12, which we know is o'clock, so it starts at zero. 12 starts at zero, okay? So now I start counting by one. So zero. One, two. Three, four. So it is nine, oh, oh. Remember, guys, anytime you do the single digits on a clock, you always say O oh before. So 06, oh, 07, oh, 09, whatever. You always say O. Oh. So it is nine, oh, four. That confuses me. Oh, nine. What, the O? Yeah. Oh, 100. That's because it's not in a tens place, it's a ones place. Oh, All right. Like four. Let's do one more on the board and then we'll look at our book. So my hour hand is between four and five. Four and five. Look where my minute hand is. Okay. So my hour hand is between four and five. Which hour would it be? Which number did it just pass? Four. So now I need to count by fives. So which five did it just pass up? Eleven. Which is? 55. So now I start counting by one. So 55, 56, 57. It's 4, 57. All right. Do y'all see what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. I'm going to know when I grade your test. So y'all telling me yes, but I'm going to know when I grade your test. No, please. Don't grade it. Basically, you're going from 4 all the way to 2. All right. So let's look at your book. Yeah, let's start with the top one. The time. It's All right, so let's look at the first clock. So look where your hour hand is. It's it's in between four and five, but it just passed up what hour? Uh, Three. I mean two. No, it just passed up the left. 
No, the hour, y'all. The hour. Yeah, the shorthand. It just passed up four. So put a four. We know the hour is four. I'm on the first clock. The hour is four. So now let's look where the minute hand is. It's in between two and three. It's in one of those lines. So that means it just passed the two. What five would two be? Ten. So let's count by once until we get to where it is. So that's 10, 11, 12, 13. 18. What time is it? 413. All right, let's look at the next one. Let's find your hand. So you find your shirt hand first, your hour. Where's our hour pointing to? Two. Mm, one. It looks like it's close to the two, but it's not. It's on that one. If it was on two, it would, because look at that. Look where the hour hand is. I mean, the minute hand, that's almost going into the next hour. So there's no way it could be two and it's going into a brand new hour. So the hour is one. So put one o'clock for your hour. So let's go ahead and figure out our minutes. So our minute hand, the long hand is in between nine and 10. So which five would that be? 50. Not 50. We'll go back five. It will be nine, which is 45. 45. So look, if it was 50, it would have been going here, but it's between nine and 10. So we got to say it's nine. So nine, so that's 45. Let's count till we get to where it is. 46, 47, 40, look at your book. 49. What time is it? One, nine, forty nine. Okay, next one. Well, it wasn't on the two. It was uh, on one. It just looked like it was close to the two, but that's because it's about to go into a new hour. Oh, I get it now. Oh, All right. It's halfway through. All right, let's look at the last one, the third one. So it's in. So let's find your short hand hour. It's in between 10 and 11. So what hour would that be? 10. 10. It will be the 10 o'clock hour. Put 10. 10 o'clock. And I want you to try to figure out the minute. Let's see. What? Oh, oh, fine. With five, it just passed. And then count by ones. Okay. Okay. Oh. I 
All right. Okay. All right. So, <coughs> Ooh, wow. Excuse me. Okay. So we'll do the bottom part tomorrow. We'll practice some more at the bottom. If you did it already, it's okay. If you didn't do it, just hold off on doing the bottom. We'll do that tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, because we got a lot to cover. We're still like not even close to done today. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the board and do some uh, work here on the board. So look at my coins up here. So now you'll start to see your book combine all of your coins together, okay? So we learned quarters, which are 25s, dimes, which are 10s, nickels, which are fives, and pennies that are ones. Really what's important is paying attention to the coin, what kind of coin it is, and knowing how to count it, okay? If you pay attention to the coin and you know how to count it and combine it, you do a great job. So let's look at this first one here. So I have three quarters, two dimes, two pennies. Anybody wants to count for it? Two quarters, I'm sorry, three quarters, two dimes, two pennies. Anybody? Okay, go ahead, Solomon. Count it out for us. Seventy. Five. Oh, can you can you start over? I didn't hear the first part. We call this a seventy-five. Okay, so twenty-five, fifty, seventy-five. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, two quarters is ninety-five. Eighty-five, ninety-five. Okay. Oh. And two, and two pennies is 99. 96, well, 97. 97 cents. 97 cents. I knew it. That's right. 25, 50, 75. Then we jump to tens. 85, 95. Ones, 96, 97. It looks like you're counting my five when you Okay, anybody want to do this for us? Okay, Harlem, go ahead. 10. Twenty, thirty, forty, fifty. Okay, now look at that. Fifty, and then I'm jumping into a quarter. But well, that shouldn't be too bad because quarters does have fifty when you count. 50. So fifty, and then where would I go from here? Seventy-five. Good, seventy-five. Oh, a dollar. Good, one whole dollar. Yeah. So, I want to make a dollar like awesome. that. Mm-hmm. All right. Problem here. So work it. Work this one. Amina, come work the second one. Okay. Come on, same time. Hurry. Okay. Okay. Right here, and Amina, do the second one. They'll work out the subtraction problems for us. Right here. Oh, I know why so you you're push doing over that. So she can come right there. So okay, here we go. Show some marks so she can have space. Do it right now. Mm-hmm. Go. Let's go. One, two, three, four. Oh, Evan. Don't tell him the answer. Nice. Did it. Twelve. No. That's your 12, 11, 10, 9, 7, 8, 9, 10, 9, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, Oh, minus 8 equals 1, then 6 minus 8 equals 2, then 8. Okay. All right, so let's look at it, see if they have it correct. So we have 64 minus 29. So we have 4 minus 9. We cannot do that, so we need to take 10 out of the 64. That turns the 6 into 5. 54 adds 10 to 4. 14 minus 9 is 5. Five minus two is three. Yep, correct. Thirty-five. Yay! Then I have ninety-two minus fifty-seven. Two minus seven can't do that, so I need to take ten from this ninety-two. Take this nine, turn it into eight for eighty-two. Add that ten to the two, it becomes twelve. Twelve minus seven is five. 
The name of my spot was three. Wow! Yeah! You are both out of your race. Yep. Awesome. Uh, awesome. Uh, and the same. Thing. All right. All right. Let's go ahead and go on to science and social studies. I do it. Uh huh. Miss Lucy, when will we get our book? Can I read science? Okay. Ah. Uh, let me let me see. Yeah, maybe we can today because we probably have time. Wait, do what? Do what? Science, science. That's what Okay, page one hundred and ten. So we'll discuss. So we'll continue to talk about sciences. Now we're going to uh, how sciences work and some of their tools that they use while they're working. After Zoom, you know we're going. Yeah, you did it to me. Yes. So after Zoom, we're going. So you might want to get it together and stop playing. All right, so where scientists work. All right, page 110. We, we can read today since it's not so much. Um, and we, yeah, we should have time. I'm trying to finish at a good time today. All right, go ahead, Harlem. Start us off 110, where scientists work. So last week we did scientific method. That's what they use. So let's talk about what they do on their job. Go ahead. Scientists often work in a lab. A lab has all of science tools they need to do their job. I am. Yeah, you can get to the bottom part. Sometimes scientists work in the place they are hey, how you doing? studying such as the ocean, the savanna, or the rainforest. Okay, good. Thank you, Harlem. All right, so scientists will work in a lab. That's where most of their job is done. That's where they will use the tools that they need. Some of them study outside of a lab and they'll study in habitats, which is how I told you they learn about all the habitats, right? They had to study and live there to be able to tell us all that we learned about the habitats. So yes, some scientists are in labs, you know, working with different things, experiments, but some scientists are out in the field that they're studying, okay? So 111, let's talk about tools that a scientist will use. I, um, Okay, anybody? 111? Okay, go ahead. Scientists use certain tools as they work. Some of these are tools we use in science class. I don't think so. We can keep going. A pencil and paper is what we use to write what we are learning. A hand lens helps us see little things more closely. It makes an object look bigger to us. What was this one again? A microscope. A microscope. Helps us investigate teeny things. Tiny. I mean, tiny things. A telescope helps us see very far away in space. Awesome. So, some of the tools that scientists will use. So, we have a pencil and a paper, right? Of course. So, they can write down all the things that they need to write. 
right? They can't just hold it all in their mind and say, I'm gonna remember. They have to make sure that they write it all down. So of course, they'll have a lens in case like they need to study close up on a plant to kind of see, or if they're watching tiny insects, they can have a hand le a lens where they could watch it closely to see how it moves and different things. And of course, a uh, microscope, that's like usually if they study like bacteria and different things like that, they'll use a microscope to look at those things close that are very tiny that the regular eye can't see. So they'll use the microscope to see those things. And then we have a telescope, of course, which they'll be able to see things in space like the stars and the sun and the moon and different things like that. They'll be able to see it because of a telescope. So of course, we know those are some of the things that scientists use. Okay, 112. Anybody, 112, okay. Uh, let's see, okay, go ahead, Solomon. And then who is that? Yeah, and then Josiah, let's do the next one. Why can't they have a good, thank you. Can I call them? Mm -hmm. The ruler helps us measure how long something is. A scale shows us how much something weighs. A breaker helps, a breaker helps us measure something liquid. A thermometer helps us measure temperature. A timer or stopwatch can count down time. A clock can also help us measure time. Okay, good. So some more tools that they'll use, a ruler, of course, to measure different things, the length of something. You know, they're really more of like a tape measure, but yeah a scale to weigh things like so much of this and so much of this together does this, right? A scale to weigh the things, a beaker, which is like a little um, tube they use, but it's like, it kind of reminds you of a measuring cup a little bit. They'll use that to measure things. Thermometer to check the temperature of things, especially like when they're doing mixing chemicals, they want to make sure that some things are the right temperature. And then you have a stopwatch, right? In case they're timing, like how many steps could a turtle take in a minute? They'll have a stopwatch to time the turtle, right? I'm just saying, for example. So these are all of the tools that they'll use. They'll have a pen and paper, hand lens, microscope, telescope, ruler, scale, beaker, thermometer, stopwatch. Okay, all right, science safety. Go ahead, Josiah, 113. Hey, when a scientist Learning about unknown things, you must be careful. Some tools and materials can be dangerous if, if not handled correctly. You going? Wash hands before starting an experiment or handling materials. Wear goggles to protect your eyes. Never taste signs, materials, or put them near your nose or mouth. Do not run your science tools or science experiments. Clean up after every every experiment. Wash your hands after you, after you finish with an experiment or handle materials. Okay, so of course, if you decide to become a scientist and experiment and study different things, you want to make sure that you are safe. First thing is you wanna make sure you have the right materials, that you're using the right things. And some materials are dangerous. So you wanna make sure when you're using those dangerous materials that you carefully, or that you know the proper way to use those materials. Of course, you wanna wash your hands before and after starting an experiment because sometimes things can spill in your hand. Wear goggles to protect your eyes. Don't taste the materials, right? Yeah, especially if you don't know what it is, you don't wanna put it in your mouth. Right. Um, if you're doing something that has to explode, don't get near it and look over it like, oh, let me see. No, you don't want to do those things. So want to make sure that if you do any experiments that you're safe and that you are careful. So um, I'll put a list of experiments that you could do at home. If you do something, maybe video it and post it so everyone can see. OK, so I'll try to do that maybe tomorrow because we'll be doing some experiments, but it'll be, you know, it's kind of so. I'll put them so you can kind of practice some of those things at home. Or if you have an experiment you've done already, you could show us a picture or something, okay? All right. All right, so that's it for science this week. So we're finished with scientists discussing what they do and where they work and the tools that they'll use. All right.
So let's go ahead and move on to social studies, talking about cattle ranching. The wild, wild west. So remember, I told y'all this week we'll dress up, right? Y'all remember that? Like cowboys, cowgirls? So since we don't really meet on Friday much, we'll do it tomorrow, okay? It's kind of last minute, I know. But we'll do, I think I did tell y'all last week it was Wednesday. Yeah. But yeah, so yeah, so if you have like a cowboy hat, a plaid shirt, like I have on plaid today, but if you have on a plaid shirt, boots, jeans, wear that tomorrow, okay, to go with our lesson, okay? Since we're cowboys and cowgirl, we're learning about that this week, so we'll dress up tomorrow. Because we don't really meet on Friday much, and so I would hate for you to get dressed and we're really not together. We'll be on Zoom tomorrow, at least a good two hours almost, so yeah. All right. So keep that in mind. Tomorrow you can dress up. Okay. So let your parents know that you can dress up on tomorrow. So if you only got a hat, that's cool. If you only got a shirt, that's okay. Too. A bandana. A bandana too. Yes. I have that. What? Because you pack up everything. All right, so social studies page 122. So I'll go through this one because it'll take a little time. So I'll go through this. You got a question, uh, Lyric? Can I show you something at the end of the class? Yes, if, yeah, if we have time, yeah. All right, so cattle ranching. So remember, the people are starting to travel west. America is growing. Now they have the railroad that really can get people to the West in a quicker way. Remember, they would take the wagon trains initially, which would take forever. So people would kind of go, you know, a few at a time. But now that the railroad is here, the West is starting to grow a lot. In the West, there's a lot of open land called prairies and plains. So it was a perfect place for people to have their animals in, right? Their cattle, their sheep, their chickens. They could have a lot of farms, a lot of cattle, ranches, all of that they could have in the West. And so as the railroad, you know, was invented and it, it, it expanded, I'm saying invented, but as the railroad was, after the railroad was built, this allowed a new type of business, you could say, in America, and that is cattle ranching, okay? So the railroad changed many things about America. And one of those things was the way people ate. The people of the East did not have much beef to eat, but there was plenty of beef in the West. And I told you that whenever we first talked about the people traveling West, remember they would send food back to their family in the East because they had never heard of buffalo or beef before. Now we can go to the store and find beef right anywhere, yeah. right? Yeah. But at that time, they did not have uh, access to a cow. That's where beef come from. So when we say ground meat, steak, all of that ribs, that those are things that come from a cow. So if you like any of those meats, hamburgers, steak meat, any of that, that's beef that comes from a cow. I like ribs. So in the East, the people did not have beef. So the railroad was going to change that. They would now be able to send beef from the West to the East. So after the Civil War, railroads made it possible to take cows from the west to the east. So they could put the cows on the train. Yes. That's how they would get them. They would put the cows on the train. What did they do? Well, they would put them in like stalls. So the west had good grazing land. That's what I was talking about, that open land, the prairies, the plains. Texas was overrun with wild cattle. So in Texas, especially North Texas, yeah. There was a lot of open land where there were animals, cows in particular, that just roamed freely. They were wild cows. They didn't have anybody that had them on a farm. They didn't have anybody that was, you know, um, leader over them, I guess you could say their owner. Instead, the cattle just roamed freely. They kind of just did their own thing, just like there's wild horses there as well. 
So now a lot of times when we see a cow, usually it's on a farm, right? We don't usually just see cows just randomly walking in the street. They're usually on a farm. So during this time though, there were a lot of wild cattle, a lot of wild cows during this time. And so because of that, that's when some men decided they would round up the cows. They would round up those cows and catch them. They would round up the cows and catch as many of the wild cows as they could, okay? So, um, the, so the person who would do that was called the rancher, okay? He was the one that would round up all the cows. Y'all know what I'm talking about, round up, when they got the rope? Yep. They spin that rope around, then they let it go. It's the lariat. That's what it's called, lariat. They would round it up, let it loose and catch. That's how they would round up the cows. They would catch as many cows as they wanted. Why? Because the cows didn't belong to anyone. So they were like, we're going to take the cows. This is a business. We can make meat from the cows. We can also make get milk from the cows. And eventually they learned that they could make cheese with the milk that they would get from the cows. So they were like, this is a perfect opportunity for us to get these cows and start a business. So they will round up the cows, how many they wanted, how many they could get at a time. And each rancher would have... Each rancher would have a brand that he would put on his cow. He would put a certain brand on the cow and they would usually put it on like the leg of the cow. And that brand would let people know who the cow belonged to. So they have like the lazy S. If a cow had that symbol on him, that brand, then you know who the cow belonged to. If a cow had that rocking K, or the walking A, you knew who the cow belonged to. This prevented people from stealing other people's cows, right? They were not able to take their cows because if they had a brand on the cow, they could not take the cow. It was not possible for them to do that. So they would brand their cows so that no one would be able to steal their cow that they took time to round up, okay? So in the days, they didn't have fences, like how we see farms have fences now. They did not have fences. Hold on one second. Yeah, they did not have fences. So the cattle was able to roam freely however they wanted to. They were able to, you know, go from this place to that place and do whatever they wanted to do. The cows were able to do that. So they hired these people called cowboys who would take care after the cattle. So the, the ranchers who were the people who owned the cows, they would hire cowboys to take care of the cows. So when we say the word cowboy, it actually does mean they are cowboys. They took care of the cows. So the cowboy, his job was to protect the cattle to make sure that the cattle was safe, the cattle had food, but also to protect them from rustlers. Rustlers were people who would steal cows. They would just steal the cow. That's why I told you they would brand their cows so that no one would steal the cow. So these ranchers hired the cowboys to step in to be the ones that would take care of the cows. So that's why the word is called cowboy, okay? Like a cowboy. And so they protected the cattle from the rustlers who were wanted to steal all the cows, okay? So a cowboy would dress for the job, right? Everything he wore had a purpose and that's why we're gonna dress up tomorrow. So every single thing he had on was for a reason. He had the cowboy hat, of course, for, to, to protect him from the sun and rain. It was open land, open field. So it was a lot of sun and then sometimes it was a lot of rain. So he would wear the cowboy hat to protect him from whatever type of weather he would have. A bandana, we know what a bandana is, right? Mm -hmm. He would wear the bandana to keep dust from getting in his nose and mouth. He would wear chaps. Chaps would protect his legs. Boots, he would wear boots to keep his feet in the saddle whenever he was riding the horse. It probably wouldn't be a good idea for a cowboy to wear sandals or slippers, no. right? trying to ride a horse so he needed boots so that his feet would fit firmly inside the saddle and his feet would also be protected as well spurs they help keep a cowboy signal his horse during very um cattle drives a lariat which is a rope they would get that rope remember i said that that's how they would round up the cows to lasso those cows in 
And then a saddle, of course. A saddle is what they put on the back of the horse so that they could ride the horse. And that's if you look at the picture of the two men, you can see all of that. They have the hat, the chaps, the boots, the saddle that they're sitting on, all of that. And their saddle was also, their saddle was also used for a pillow at night, right? Because they would sometimes sleep out in the open field with the cattle. Yeah. Okay. All right. So a cattle herd would often have like a thousand cattle at one time. So that's why they needed cowboys. That's a lot of cows. A lot of cows, right? Yeah. So that's why they really needed to hire those cowboys to help them look after their cows. Cowboys would, like I said, they would live with the cattle. They would give them food, water, and protection. Okay, let's look at 125. Cattle drive. So let's talk about how they would do a how they would get the cow from the west to the east coast. Let's talk about that. Not many towns in the west had railroads, right? The towns that did have railroads to take the cows to the east were called cow towns. So there were certain towns during this time that there were certain towns during this time that were able to ha have they had a railroad that went through it where they could take the cows and they were called cow towns because they were one of the few cities that could dodge city kansas was the most famous cow town Is that no anybody's in kansas no maybe not yeah Omar, that's where you are, Omar, in Kansas? No? Okay, that's somebody in Kansas. But anyway, so Dodge City, Kansas is a famous town in, um, in Kansas, the state. And Dodge City, that was one of the most famous cow towns. So a rancher would hire the cowboys to drive the cattle from, a cow, from each cow town. How long would it take? It would take about four months for them to get the cows from the west all the way to the east. So it was not like a quick journey. It took some time for them to get the cows, to bring the cows because yeah, they would have them on the train, but you gotta think about, it. they had to let them off the train so they could go eat. They could, you know, do whatever they needed to do, put them all back on the train. And remember some of the cattle herds were like a thousand cattle at one time. So it took some time and this was a hard job for the, cat, the cowboys. It was a very tough job, but they got it done. So the cattle they looked after were called longhorns. Do you see why? Look at those horns on that cow. That's why it's called a longhorn. Yep, really, really long. Uh -huh. So it's a cow, a longhorn is a type of cow. There's, you know, yeah. Okay, so let's turn to 126. You don't want to play with those cows. No, don't that cow. You only can know girl cows. So the rancher who owned the cattle would travel with the cowboys for the next four months. So they would all travel together for four months, getting those cows from the west to the east. The rancher would also hire a cook who drove a chuck wagon. So a truck wagon is similar to um, a wagon that was used by the pioneers, but instead they would keep like pots, pans, all of that in it so that they could cook, you know, whatever they needed to cook. And it was a kitchen on wheels. So they would have this person who would have a chuck wagon where they would cook all the meals that the men needed. The cowboys would eat bacon, beans, bread almost every day. Of course, they would have coffee and beef steak as well. So they would have coffee and beef steak along with all of that too, okay? The cowboys rode all day, which meant their horses would need a break. Because remember, they rode horses Everybody else rode, um, <clears throat> sorry, they rode horses and they couldn't ride a cow. I mean, I don't, people don't ride cows, right? They don't, yeah, okay. So, so the cowboys, so they're, sometimes their horses would need a break. So usually they would take like three horses with them so that they could rotate the horses you know one horse for another to another, to another yeah yep so while he was riding one horse the other two were resting okay and when that one would get tired he would get his next horse so it was a lot of work it was a lot of work they would go through okay so the rancher would also hire a man called a wrangler and it was the wrangler's job to look after the horses so you have the rancher who owns the cattle the cowboys who take care of the cattle and then you have the wrangler who takes care of the horses of the cowboys. 
And we also have the rustlers, those who want to steal the cattle. So these are all terms you'll have to know for the test Friday. So keep that in mind, okay? So let's talk about a roundup. A real cowboy loved his job. One thing he feared though was a stampede. Everybody knows what a stampede is? Yes. It's when all the animals just take off running and not thinking about it. They're just running, 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 running. Oh, yeah, like yes. If you remember on the Lion King, whenever uh the dad, remember he fell when all the what wildebeest were running? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Wait, That's a stampede. That's what a stampede looks like. So yeah, <laughs> in a stampede, the cattle become wild. So when a stampede happens, it's really, really dangerous because the cattle, they're just wild. They're not thinking. They're just running. They're in fear for their lives. So they're just like running. They're like, we need to go. We need to get out of here. We're running. So it can be extremely dangerous for like the cowboys and every, you know, the cowboys, the rancher, everybody, if they get caught in the middle of this stampede, the cows, because they're so big, could injure them and even kill them if they got caught in the middle of that stampede. Stampedes cause danger, damage and they were dangerous. What caused the stampede? This is the thing. Sometimes it could be just a sudden sound. It just scares them. It could be a thunder, right? It could be someone just makes a loud sound. And if everything's quiet and the cows hear this, they'll just start to run everywhere. They're like, no, we're scared. We're afraid. We're afraid. We're afraid. And if one cow starts running, guess what? They all start to run. That's so after four months of long, hard days of driving cattle, you can be sure the cowboys were glad to ride into a cow town. When they finally, after four months, made it into the cow town, they were like, yes, we can finally ship these cows off to the west. I mean, to the east. Okay. So would you want to do, would you want to do the wagon train or would you rather do the, the cattle roundup? Which you have, not the roundup, the cattle drive. Which one would you cattle prefer? Drive, to drive. travel to the west on the wagon train, do that journey, or, wagon do, the train. Cattle, or do the cattle drive where you bring the cattle to the east? Wagon, 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 wagon train. Wagon train. Some people say wagon trains, some people say cattle wagon drive. Train. I think I would prefer the cattle drive. Yeah. yeah. What? Okay. So the American West has changed. And one thing for certain is that this railroad changed a lot of things in America. Okay. All right. So that is it for this week. Learning about uh, cattle ranching, the ranchers, the cowboys, their job, all that they wore, the rustlers, the wranglers, the wranglers, the cattle drives. And that means getting the cows from the West to the East. Okay. All right. So tomorrow we can dress up. If you have a hat or anything, a button down boots, anything like that, you can wear any, all of that tomorrow, okay? All right. All right, so last thing for the day will be our reading. Oh, yeah, Miss Luna Toddles has little pokey thing at the back of her shoes, too. Mm -hmm. All right, so we are on this page here. Remember, we don't have page numbers, so we kind of just... Can do this? Mm-hmm. We don't have page numbers, so I'm going to just show you the picture. So remember, this is in Birmingham, Alabama, 1963. During this time, there was a lot of discrimination against people because of their color of their skin. And people felt like they wanted to stand up against it because they were like, it's not fair. It's not right, you know, to be treated this way because of the color of your skin, which it was not okay. So Black people decided that they would stand up and march against all of this. They would stand up and protest against all of what was going on. It was not fair. It was wrong. So Dr. Martin Luther King came to their town one day to let them know that he, would, he was going to host a peaceful protest where they would stand up against everything that was going on. But the parents were a little concerned because they knew it was dangerous to protest because they could potentially get arrested for it. You know, they would lose their jobs and they're like, we have kids, we have a family, we can't lose our jobs. So the children say, well, we could participate. We don't have a job to lose, right? Yeah. So we could do it. So let's pick up today here. You can't do Anybody? it. Nobody? Okay, go ahead, Omar. Dr. King didn't like children being put in harm's way. But he was a daddy too, after all. But he said, though we were young, we were not too young to want our freedom. 
Okay. So Dr. King, he hears the about the children and he's like, I would <clears throat> like to let the children, but he didn't want to put the children in harm's way because he knew how dangerous it was for the children to march, right? And so, but the children are like, we want to, we want to do this. Okay, let's turn the page. Okay, come on. Yeah, I can do this the point, next. Well, we have to study this on Wednesday. On May 2nd, a sunny day, boys and girls, okay. brothers and sisters, cousins and friends, we all met at the church dressed in our best feet ready. Do this one. Mm -hmm. In a silence so loud that I, all I, I could hear was my racing heart. We began to walk hand in hand. We marched so frightened yet certain of what was right for freedom. Okay. So on May 2nd, you back there? On May 2nd, it was a Thursday. The boys and girls, they met at church and they were like, we're going to march. So that's brave of those kids, right? And so it's not just like teenagers. There were like six-year-old kids who was a part of this. Like I told you, this is a true story. So there were little kids who were a part of this march and said, we're going to stand and fight for freedom. And we're going to protest and march as well. Okay? So let's turn the page. Okay, go ahead, Larry. Would I be hurt? Would we be hard would it all be work it in the end i want to run for the angry angry face in the Crown run from danger run for from fair Oh, you can keep going. Other page too. Boys and girls, brothers and sisters. Count cousins. Cousins and friends on no and on and on we march we march we march okay good so the children they kind of have concerns too they're like will we be heard will something happen to us right and so they had people that were mad that they were doing this and so but the children didn't allow the faces of the people to get to them they still continue to march, singing songs of freedom. All right, turn the page. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know this book. Hate dogs. My heels. He hate do dodge. No, that's dogs. Hate dogs. Hate dogs. My heels off that day it's yellowed caning canine sharp but courage walk okay, on her side it. kept me going um, hold on I'll show you after she's done this this curse are you'll, you'll be jailed. The police shouted the first day. This curse are you'll get wet. The police shouted the second day. This curse 
are will re release the dogs. The police shouted the third day. We did not disperse. Disperse. We kept on marching. We couldn't stop until things started to change. Good. So the children didn't just march one day. They were marching for days. And whenever they were marching, as you can see, the off they would spray the policemen would spray them with hose hoses, right? Which really stung their skin. That doesn't feel good at all. And not just like a water hose. This is like say like a fire hose. Like on the Martin Luther King. Yeah. So they would like spray them, and for no reason they were not like doing anything like to say oh spray us. No, they just did it. And so they were telling them, you're going to go to jail. Stop doing this. But the children continued to march day after day. They kept marching because they wanted change. And the dog. Okay, let's turn the page. Anybody? Could I read a book? Okay, go ahead, Harlan. Could I read a book? After I was sprayed. By water stronger than anything I've ever felt. Rough hands pushed me forward, and I fell to my knees in the police wagon. I was going to jail. Dr. King. Reassured. Reassured oh, yeah, now our, our parents don't worry about your children, he said. They're going to be all right. Don't hold them back if they want to go to jail, for they are doing a job for not only themselves but for all for uh, America and for all mankind. Okay, good. So they spray them with the water hoses. And, and they eventually, because the children did not listen, they didn't, you know, disperse like they wanted them to. Because of that, hundreds of the children were arrested. Like I said, even the little kids, they arrested them all and put them in jail. Okay. And so the parents were worried. They were like, our kids, our kids. But Dr. King told them, he says, they'll be okay. They'll be all right. Because he saw the strength that the children had. So we'll stop here. So tomorrow we'll read some more to see what happens to the kids what after. The kids? They were How much time do I have to Okay. You don't even know what's right. Okay. All right. So we'll stop here. All right. So that is it for us today, guys. Just go over your adverbs. Paper, remember, an adverb is a word that describes a verb, an adjective, or another verb. And so go over the examples we did yesterday. Remember, when it came to verbs, it, it we described how the verb is done. So if we say run, we would say quickly, slowly. We would say drive, carefully. So just go over that tomorrow. We'll do some more practice with that, okay? All right, so that is it, guys. I hope y'all have a good day. Remember, we can dress up tomorrow, so don't forget that. Uh-huh, Lyric? Can I show you something, Mom? Okay.